accused of jumping on a bus to claim third prize in the Kielder Marathon. I've been to meet him. That looks like a look of relief on Rob Slime, the Sunderland Harrier's face. Was it relief or an attempt to hide his face? This is the moment Rob Sloan crossed the line at the Kielder Marathon and walked into a media storm that's made him Britain's most notorious runner. Everything revolves around running. I try and do between 100 and 120 miles over a seven year period. What does your wife think of that? We've had a conversation. It's me or the running and, and I chose the running. But thankfully, she still stayed with me. She stands by me and, and she's been very, very supportive throughout this whole shenanigans. Those shenanigans led to former soldier Rob being thrown out of his running club and banned from competition until next March. He's accused of jumping on a bus to complete the Kielder Marathon. Two months on, he's still denying it. Who in, my argument is who in the right mind runs 24 mile of a 26 mile race, diversifies off the route, manages to find a bus, make the way back into the race, lie in wait until not only first and second, passed, then joined the race and finished third. In my opinion, I should have joined the SES, not the Remy, if, if I could pull off something like that. We'll examine the case against Rob shortly. Before then, he was keen to show me he can run a marathon, even on a treadmill. Go three hours, yeah. All right, OK, well, I'll stop your stopwatch. Cameras are on, no stopping. See you soon. Rob's story begins the day before the marathon, when he ran the Kielder 10K. This time, the result was undisputed. It was something I'd done basically just to make the whole Kielder weekend an experience. The marathon was always the focus. And fortunately, managed to, to win by two and a half minutes. A 10K and then a marathon on top of that, is that not too much in one go? Mate, if you ask any seeing person, it's here, yes, but not like a challenge. He was really over the moon about it, and he's saying now he's looking forward to the marathon. I said, are you sure you're going to do this marathon? Yeah, not taking a bit too much on, but he's adamant he was going to do this marathon. So, flushed with success, Rob headed for the front row at the start of the marathon, shoulder to shoulder with the cream of the northern running scene. The race order became set just seconds from the start. The leaders quickly pull away. A gap opens up with Rob now falling back. There was a girl went off quite quick as well, and she was initially ahead of me just for a couple of hundred metres. So I slotted into that third place very quickly. Three men occupy the lead positions at the front. Steve Cairns, a veteran long distance runner, is third here at a mile and still third at 15 miles. I knew the whole way I was third and I was confident I was third. Well, I actually was going around the course and saw certainly the leaders at various points between miles 15 and 16. Uh, the leader had already gone through when I got there actually, but I did watch the second person and the third person who was Stephen Cairns. He's quite a distinctive runner, Stephen. And then there was a massive gap after him. I did see the fourth person co runner coming through at that point, it wasn't Rob Sloan. Now, as I went past him, I said, hi, Steve. And at that point, Steve remembers I had a huge, huge gap. He never timed it, but it was massive. Precise timings are recorded at halfway. Steve Cairns is third at one hour, 23 minutes. Rob Sloan is eighth at one hour, 27. The gap between the two is now more than four minutes. At 17 miles, the course photographer snaps Rob in a group crossing the Kielder Dam. He's now fallen back to 10th place. A couple of miles further down the course, the race route runs close to the road. A bus is laid on for spectators. We were on the bus taking us up to the finish line and we saw some guy running by the side of the bus trying to flag the bus down. So he sort of slammed on the brakes and the guy jogged to catch up and uh, got on the bus and he had uh, a running shirt on and obviously covered in mud and wet and had his number on so we knew he'd been a participant in the mar marathon. He had a Sunderland Harriers uh, vest on and a, and a marathon number. He had a big tattoo on his right leg as well which kind of stood out as well. So obviously he was standing at the, the front of the bus facing forward so we saw at the background quite a lot and the tattoo on his right leg and you could see it quite distinctively. It looked like lines of verse. We sort of joked about that's the way to do a marathon, that's a good way to finish it, get the bus. The driver also recalls stopping for a runner who looked like Rob Sloan and who told him he was injured having run the 10k the day before. But despite the uncanny resemblance, the earrings, haircut, running vest and a tattoo on his right leg, Rob Sloan says it wasn't him. I did not cheat at any given point and I most certainly, certainly did not get on a bus. It was me. I think it's more a case of mistake and identity. It was me. 
the bus stopped and he got off. And again, we joked, oh, he's going to join back in, sort of not thinking he would. Um, and made our way down to the finish just to see the, f the first guy come across the finish line. And I saw that the winner, he went past, got his medal and all that, and the guy who finished second went past. And then the guy who finished third came in to get his medal. And we were standing there thinking, that's the guy that was just on the bus half an hour ago. Then Steve Kens crossed the finishing line, believing he was third. I turned to the marshal who was standing there and I says, was I fourth? And he says, yes. And I says, well, who was third? And he pointed to this guy who was now doing a TV interview just a few metres away from me. When I was stood behind him, I wanted to challenge him. I wanted to just grab hold of him and say, how were you third? Because that was my question. How do I prove what just happened? I, at that time, I had no idea what he had done. Two young ladies came to the finish and asked to speak. And uh, they said that the guy who had crossed the line in third place had been on a spectator's bus with him. We had another lady within a few minutes who came to us saying that she'd seen him uh, joining the course, I've been coming from a direction which wasn't, you know, the marathon route. Um, so we put out a tannoy announcement for Mr. Sloan, um, ostensibly at that point to tell him to come for the prize giving, but we did want to talk to him, um, but he disappeared. So um, we took the decision there and then that we had already had enough evidence at that point um, to disqualify him. What I first heard was that he got off the bus and he was heading towards the finish, and then the commentator saw him and sort of built him up, so he decided to run in. He did admit to me what he had done, and I felt sorry for him. And I think if he came clean at that particular time, I think the club would have took a lenient point of view towards him. Yes, I'm in the record books now as being third, but there's no pictures of me in a podium at the finish, and that's what annoyed me. He took that on the day, and that's gone. You know, and to be honest, I'm a bit sick and tired of him um, denying it now. We did give him the option early on when he did actually admit it to us on the phone, I think the day after. Um, and we prepared a statement which was just basically saying he'd made a mistake and he'd apologised. We were happy with that. People do this in all marathons. Most of them, well, the vast majority of them, all of them, don't come in the top three, though. So he received an amount of publicity because of that. Back at the gym, our cameras confirm Rob has completed this marathon fair and square in three hours, seven minutes. That's it. How are you feeling? Oh, yeah. I'm fine. Really? So, breath from, right? yeah. Well, we know you can do the marathon. The bad news is there's no medal for this one. <laughs> Rob bases his defence on the readout from his Garmin sat-nav system worn on his wrist. He says it shows him travelling at a constant pace until the last couple of miles of the race, when it went haywire. It sounds incredible in the true sense of the word. It's unbelievable yeah, something that it stinks. wasn't you. Something stinks. Totally agree with that. All I know is, again, I came third in that race. I was chip-timed. I have my Garmin. Somebody might well say, you've, you've done a fantastic job the day before. You won the 10K. Next day, you're running. And for whatever reason, right near the end, it's too much. A bus is coming along. Do you know what? I'll get on it. You get on it and say, right, I want to be let off just before the end, because in your head you're thinking, right, I need to finish this race just for me. But by accident, you come in third, mm -hmm. and that's where it all falls apart. Yeah. Tell a small fib, which then gets difficult to get out of. Yeah. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and that's the situation you're in. A lie that's just gone bonkers. That's conceivable, that's very conceivable, but my garment can't lie. It, it clearly states it goes fuzzy where the woods are, which is where you know, it, it goes very fuzzy. Now, from that point to the road is approximately, approximately, certainly over a mile and a half, or it's two miles to go to the race. It just... But it also says, if you're going to believe it, it also says you went at around 30 miles an hour towards the end, so that's about the speed of a bus. Well, it does, but a Garmin wouldn't work on a bus. That's first and foremost, and secondly, that is not what well, you mine. say that, but, I mean, you know, uh, it, could be, it could be next to the windows, see satellites, you know... The, I know you're saying this adamantly, but there's plenty of people who could be able to pick holes in that. Yes, almost definitely. That's, that, that's why I'm, I'm not here to sort of judge jury. I, I'm just here to give my side of the story. And so, if on paper, at least, you're guilty because you're not appealing and you can't, yeah. um, how do you rehabilitate yourself within the, the sporting world? I want to come back next year. I want to run the Marathon of the North and I want to do it for charity, do it for Help for Heroes which is very, something very, very close to my heart, being, you know, an ex-servant soldier. I mean, he would like to be able to run in his hometown, can he? 
I think before we would consider having him in any of our events, we would hope that he'd at least come and apologise and finally admit that, in fact, it doesn't bear any truth at all. So I think until he does that, I'm not sure we'd consider him in any of our events.